As the energy company suits headed for a price summit in number 10, yes, number 10, the Prime Minister would be hosting, District Nurse Allison began her rounds in Lucas in Fife. So how's your legs been? Fine. Good? Yeah. Checking up on 75-year-old Georgina. In Downing Street, energy bosses and the government emerged from talks with plans to continue to talk. Boris Johnson saying significant decisions would have to wait for his successor next month. No new support was announced today. So what worries you the most about this rise in costs and things? It's just electric and what you go do in the winter. This winter, Georgina will not have central heating. No, because that's, that's the only heating I've got over there. Oh, it's just a portable heater? Mm, yeah. I see, that's enough, is it? Well, that's at the moment. And still, she fears rising prices on a modest pension. What can she do? Where are you going to find the extra money, do you think, this winter? <laughs> You're not. If you don't have it in, you can't spend it, can you? You get maybe £5 pension rise in April. It doesn't even cover a half loaf in the bag of ties, does it? That's the, thing, that's the little thing that worries me. <laughs> what are we going to do in the winter? Yes. OK. Right, cheerio. <laughs> Alison worries too. She worries that some of her patients have nothing else to cut back. If there's no heating, they'll be cold. If they're cold, they'll stay in their bed. If they stay in their bed, they can get pressure sores. Pressure sores lead to infection. Um, they'll be malnourished because they'll not get up and, and make food. I, I believe people will die because they can't afford to heat their homes. I, do, I really do. Um, some of our elderly, uh, where will they get the money from? There is fear among communities across the country that the energy price rises this winter will be a catastrophe that will push people into poverty, into debt, and in the worst cases, towards death. And the question from many on these streets to Downing Street is what more will you do now to prevent it? This energy price emergency saw average household bills reach a record high last October that keeps growing and could hit £5,000 in April, according to one forecast. The government's announced £400 help per household, rising to £1,200 for the most vulnerable. As for the next PM, Rishi Sunak is promising unspecified increased support, as well as temporarily taking VAT off energy bills. Liz Truss pledges tax cuts more generally and cutting the green levy on bills. But critics say any of these plans leave most households to fund the bulk of this alarming rise themselves. So are there bigger ideas to come that truly meet the scale of the challenge? The leadership candidates have hinted they will go further. Labour says we'll hear more from Keir Starmer imminently as Gordon Brown, the man in charge during the financial crisis, called on energy companies that fail to lower prices to be renationalized, just as the French government is bringing EDF under state control. The government, who are actually supposed to be running the country, believe it or not, right now, are telling us they're going to make no decisions at all for weeks. Now, we need the government to stop acting like a zombie, to rise from their slab and start telling the British people what they will do with the power that they're supposed to have. These power companies and the stock them, racketeering, because that's what they're doing. For Alison, it's on to Dave, who had a stroke four years ago. She's concerned for those she cares for, but also after 40 years as a nurse for herself. Do you have money to pay your heating bills this winter? Well, um, I'll make, you know, I'll make allowances. I shop in charity shops, rarely go out. Um, what, what more can I do? And how are you getting on with the electricity company this now? Is more help coming? The question, unanswered today, will not go away. Kieran Jenkins, well, I'm joined now by Dale Vince, founder of green energy provider Ecotricity. Um, thanks for coming on the program. Um, you heard that report there by Kieran Jenkins, pretty grim stuff. And then, of course, you saw those pictures of the meeting in number 10 between the government and the energy sector. Was that political theatre or was there anything more to it? Yeah, it was absolute theatre. It was a pointless meeting. These are the wrong people to meet with. 
uh, the, the energy suppliers are stuck in the middle between a government price cap on the one side and rising wholesale prices on the other, which the government have not controlled. The one thing government could do to take away at least half of this problem this winter is to put a price cap on the on North Sea gas. Half of all of our gas in this country comes from our North Sea, but we've allowed it to go up four to five times in price in the last 12 months because of global commodity markets. We don't have to do that. We can control the price of North Sea gas, but the government aren't doing anything substantial. And this meeting was just to really point the finger at energy companies and say they're the bad guys, but we're talking to them. Because governments in Europe are certainly you know, intervening quite robustly. We just heard that example there uh, from France. I mean, the numbers are astonishing, aren't they? In this country, <clears throat> energy prices have increased by 215%. Across the EU, it's 44%. In Germany, it's 23%. In France, it's 4%. How do you explain this extraordinary discrepancy between energy prices going up in this country compared to Europe? I think the difference is very clear. They have governments that care and governments that have done something about it. Our government has neither a care or a done anything concrete to tackle the problem. It simply blames it on somebody else and then gets on with, a, I don't know, another leadership contest or something. Um, it's simply that. You know, the, the French have done the most outstanding job. The Germans at 20% is amazing. Our bills from this October will be three times higher than what they were 12 months ago. And come next April, they will be five times higher. That's madness. So despite the war in Ukraine, despite the post-COVID surge in demand, despite all this, it doesn't need to be as bad as it is in this country right now and go to get. It absolutely doesn't because half of the gas we use in our country, we, we make ourselves from the North Sea. But we've allowed global commodity markets and oil and gas companies to set that price at a crazy level. This is why we have windfall profits in the North Sea, that the government have failed to tax properly. And all of that money is coming out of people's re energy bills. Uh, our government have just done nothing about it, but they could. <clears throat> the, the simple thing is to price cap North Sea gas. And as far as the, wind, the windfall tax is concerned, of course, there was a huge amount of debate and discussion about it in a, in a distant era a couple of months ago. But even that windfall tax doesn't work properly because if companies reinvest, they're exempt from it, aren't they, to a large extent? Yeah, I mean, what you said is right. It's worse than that as well because the windfall tax didn't kick in until July. So the $15 billion that BP made this year before July is untouched. And the tens of billions they made last year before the end of the year is also untouched. And as you say, they can get a 90% exemption from the windfall tax anyway if they just invest in stuff they were going to invest in anyway. So and there's yet, a really weak... Sorry, right. go on. And yet, and yet, the government has thrown hundreds of millions of pounds at the problem by, you know, by putting money into people's households in order to deal with their bills. So they have opened the coffers to a large extent. To an extent. It isn't a large enough extent. We spent $400 billion getting through the pandemic to keep the economy and our people more or less whole. We need to spend 10% of that this winter, roughly $40 billion, to take away this problem for, for yeah. people that simply can't afford to heat their homes. Just one-tenth of the pandemic spend and we're through the problem. I think there's a real case for the government to do that. The government's first job is to protect the people of this right. country. Dale Vince, thanks very much indeed.